Hey everybody, Chris here again. Welcome back to the channel. Always good to have you with us. So today, we're gonna set up an innovative way to copy data to a retro PC involving a null modem cable, a USB to serial adapter, and a Raspberry Pi. That's right, we're creating a serial transfer file server. So the question is, why bother with this? Well, in reading the online forums, I see a lot of folks that have broken floppy drives and need a way to transfer files onto their systems, and they don't have a network set up, so I thought, why not cover a way to do this via serial? Hence this video. So today I'm going to take you through the setup procedure, starting with preconditions, and be warned, there is some hardware that you need to buy, as you can see here on the desk. More on that in a minute. From there, I'll show you a procedure to set up your Raspberry Pi as a Samba file server. From there, we're going to install DOSBox, which is going to allow us to run FastLinks, the transfer program, on the Raspberry Pi. I'll then show you an optional way to get the FastLinks program over to your retro PC if you don't have a floppy drive but do have a serial connection. From there, we'll show you how to perform the file transfer, and then we'll look at another optional workflow where you can set this Raspberry Pi up to automatically boot up and load fast links all ready to go and all ready to transfer files. So without further ado, let's go. Before we talk about preconditions, I will note that this procedure is available in my Git repository, and there will be a link in the description below so that you can easily find it. Okay. So next let's talk about preconditions and there are several hardware preconditions. First of all, you need a null modem cable, a nine pin DE9 to a nine pin DE9 or nine pin DE9 to 25 pin DB9, depending upon the type of serial port that you have on your retro computer. I actually have a double headed serial cable that has both 9 and 25 pin connectors on it and that's really convenient to have. Also you will need a USB to serial converter cable and I have gone with the Sabrent USB 2.0 to serial DB9 RS-232 converter cable with a prolific chipset and this seems to work pretty well. I believe you can use other cables, you just need to make sure they are compatible with a Raspberry Pi, which I imagine most will be. Also, you need either a 9-pin or 25-pin serial port installed on your retro computer, and you're also going to need a Raspberry Pi, SD card, power cord, and monitor keyboard mouse to support the setup. You will also need a licensed version of FastLinks 2.0 for DOS, and also you will need to set up a Raspberry Pi and enable SSH. And I do have a procedure for this, actually as well as a video, but we'll start with the procedure. Here you can see me loading it up in the web browser and it takes you through step by step on what you need to do, and it's not that long of a procedure. You'll want to follow that. And for purposes of the procedure, you'll want to name the host name FilePy. The next thing we'll want to do is set up our Raspberry Pi to be a Samba file server, and I have a procedure and video for that as well. We'll go ahead and load up the procedure here, and the key thing is, it's very short, and when done, you'll have a Samba file share that you can access from pretty much any of your retro PCs, which is nice. The next thing we need to do is install and configure DOSBox. And to show you this part of the procedure, I'm actually going to flip over to the Raspberry Pi and or modern computer. So let's go ahead and do that and launch a terminal. And the first thing we need to do is make some directories within our file share so that we have places to put the FastLinks program as well as any files that we want to transfer to the retro PC. So there you go. And I'll go ahead and chmod these so that they are accessible by everybody. So now I'm going to go to the modern PC and I'm going to navigate to the FilePy 
data directory and then FX20 and copy my copy of Fastlinks 2.0 to that directory once I drag this folder down. <laughs> All right, so we'll drag that in there and now we have Fastlinks 2.0 available to be executed by DOSBox on the Raspberry Pi. Great. So from here, I'm going to install DOSBox by doing a sudo apt-get install DOSBox. And I'll tell you what, this really couldn't be easier. Just press Y and sometime later, it will be all installed. Doesn't take very long. From there, let's go ahead and launch it one time via DOSBox, just so that a configuration file gets created and we can type exit. And now we can go ahead and edit that configuration file, which lives under the .dosbox directory and has the format dosbox star.conf. And I'm going to go ahead and search for the word serial. And once I find that, I'm gonna go down to the serial section and find serial one and change it to match my real serial port that will be connected to the Raspberry Pi. So we use the syntax direct serial and then real port colon and the name of the port. Now, if you're not using a Sabrent connector, it may be different, but for the Sabrent connector I'm using, that's what it is. From there, we can search out auto exec and add some lines for that. So the first line we're going to add is a mount command. We'll mount drive C as data X for and do a dash T floppy. That will ensure that the C drive gets updated as files get updated in that directory. We'll also mount drive D. Then we will change to drive C so that we are in the current directory for file transfer and then launch fast links by doing a D colon slash FX. So with that, we can go ahead and save the file out and we're ready to roll. So now it's time to test. Great. I'm going to launch DOSBox and we'll see it launch there and we'll see fast links start up. So perfect. And we'll also see in the output that opening TTY USB zero was displayed. Now, if there were some sort of error message about unable to open the port, we would know we have some sort of problem and further troubleshooting is required. However, in this case, we can see that it was a success, so we can move forward. So the next step is an optional step, but an interesting one, in that we can actually remote load the Fastlinks program on the client via the Fastlinks server, which is the Raspberry Pi. So with the cable connected and with Fastlinks running, we can arrow down to the upload option and press enter. And then from there, my remote serial port is COM1, so I'm going to press enter on that. And with that, the server is in a mode where it's ready to transmit to the client. And we can see there are a series of instructions here, including connecting the cable, indicating the port the remote computer is using, and then typing the following commands on the remote computer. So with that, I'll switch on over to the retro computer at this point, and I'll go ahead and make a directory for Fastlinks, change into it, and we'll issue those commands as indicated. And it is COM1 for me, so COM1 2400N81P. And then if we do a CTTY COM1, we can see that the bootstrap starts to load, and we can see on the left that files are being sent, and on the right, files are being received, and I have sped this up. And with that, we have remotely loaded fast links onto the client retro computer. So next, let's cover how to transfer and copy files. The first thing I'm going to do is on my modern PC, navigate to FilePy Data Exfer. And in my case, I happen to have these Windows 3.11 for workgroups installation files. I'm going to drag those over and go ahead and copy them to that particular folder. We'll speed this up as you can see here. And now I have something to transfer. And now we can go to the retro PC and select split screen mode. And we'll see it takes just a minute to negotiate the speed of transfer, but it does finish up and we get 115200, which is pretty fast. And we are then presented with a screen for files on the left and files on the right. So files on the left represent our retro PC and files on the right represent the Fastlinks server, I'm calling it. So I went ahead and hit F9 to change some options. The first thing I'm going to do is change directories to be copy all subdirectories so that we do copy them. And also we're going to change prompt mode to be do not prompt before transfers, otherwise it's going to prompt every time it creates a subdirectory. 
From there, I can press escape and save and exit. We'll get this error screen, that's okay. Press escape. And now we're presented with, once again, our local machine on the left and our machine to copy files from or our Fastlink server on the right. The first thing I'm going to do is navigate down to that dot dot on the left to go back to the main directory. And then on the right, I'm hitting the F5 key to do a batch select, even though we're only going to really be transferring one file or one directory in this case. When I hit F3, we can see that the magic begins and a directory gets created on our local machine. And 20 minutes later, the transfer will be complete. It does take some time, but hey, 20 minutes for about 13 megabytes, not too terrible. It gets the job done and it allows us to copy files to our retro PC, so I'll take it. So the final thing I want to do is to configure our Fastlink server to automatically start up on system boot on the Raspberry Pi. So to do that, we're going to do a sudo apt-get install xvfb. And what this will do is install a virtual frame buffer X server where we can redirect the output of DOSBox so that when we start up DOSBox, we actually won't see anything really. And once installed, we can modify the etc rc local file. So let's go ahead and open that up in nano. And above that exit zero line, we're going to add the following run user dash L for pi and then dash C in the command we want to execute which is going to be xvfb run dosbox. And then we will pipe the output to a temp file under the temp directory called dosbox.log. So with that, we'll have the ability to go and look and debug if we have any problems and all of the contents that would otherwise be put out by the dosbox shell startup will be output there. And from there, we can go ahead and save this file and exit. And at that point, we can go ahead and do a Raspberry Pi reboot. And when we do the reboot, we can go ahead and launch a terminal and we can run a command called pgrep to see if DOSBox is running. So I'll go ahead and run pgrep DOSBox and we can see what we get back. And if we get back an integer ID, that means indeed it is running. So with that, we're all set up. All right, well, that's what I have for you today. I'm really excited about this procedure because it provides us the opportunity to basically drag and drop files from a modern PC onto the Pi and then instantly transfer them using the retro PC and fast links. Definitely subscribe to the channel. There's more content on the way. Ring that notification bell and you'll be notified when new content is available. If you liked what you saw today, please give us a thumbs up. If not, consider sending me a strong message by pressing that thumbs down button twice. As always, it's been great having you along for the journey, and I look forward to seeing you next time. But until then, bye for now.